Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I wanted to film a video talking about the things that I've read so far this weekend slash all the things that I currently have out from the library. I kind of filmed this video already. I thought I was going to make a vlog, but then it didn't really happen. I'm kind of starting a sore throat right now. Um, but I have gotten a lot of reading done, especially I've read a lot of graphic novels this weekend. I finished some things and I've started some new things as well, which is exciting. I have so many. I have like a stack of books that I have currently checked out. I'm coming to the realization that like I can't read them all. Uh, so let's see what I prioritize from this pile that I have checked out so far. First, let's talk about the things that I've already finished this weekend. This graphic novel called Sincerely Harriet by Sarah W. Searle. And it's like a really pretty graphic graphic novel on the inside. Um, the plot and the characterization is not maybe the best ever. Um, it felt a little bit convoluted and a little bit like it wanted to really mean something and it was a little bit hard to follow how it concluded. I also finished, which I really liked, I Was There American Dream, a graphic memoir by uh, Malaka Garib. And this is a really awesome graphic memoir from the perspective of the author and illustrator who is of Filipina and Egyptian descent. Um, her parents got a divorce when she was young and it's kind of seeing her traveling between Egypt and then her town in California. Um, there is some discussion about like microaggressions and like how she saw her identity uh, but the the true star in this book is how she talks about her family and how much her family has meant to her. And yeah, it's a very heartwarming read because of the family aspect of it. I also finished the very much anticipated Guts, the new release by Raina Telgemeier. The inside is so beautiful on this one. And this one was really insightful and kind of different um, and I'm glad for it to exist in our juvenile graphic novels section. This deals with her anxiety and how anxiety in her life caused um, stomach problems and made her feel like she had to go to the bathroom all the time, like she was gonna throw up and then that caused her to be even more anxious because throwing up is like disgusting to her and something she couldn't even feel like she could actually do and it's her going to therapy as a result not wanting to tell anybody about anything that she was going through um, and then realizing closer towards the end as many Ra Raina Telgemeier books make you realize is that everybody is going through their own thing and everybody has their own struggles um, and it's good to lean on each other and to be able to be open with other people about the things that you're going through. I really like the messages in this one. I feel like her storytelling and her narration is always spot on and seamless it's kind of too perfect sometimes. I also finished Gia Tolentino's Trick Mirror on audiobook and I have to say I'm kind of, I was kind of disappointed by it at the end. I felt like Gia Tolentino spent more time just like talking about pop culture things and like explaining them and organizing chronologically how they happen than she really did kind of like analyzing and criticizing um, and making points about the things she was talking about. My favorite essays were the ones that were more about her personal life, like the one about her and her stint on reality TV was amazing. Her talking about like drugs and comparing it to religion and ecstasy was also really awesome. And then the first essay, The Eye and Internet, is also really good. And then there were kind of some duds, like I didn't really care for the scams one, I feel like it's all stuff that I've already read and it's been well covered. A lot of them were kind of more, to me, it felt like she was just distilling the situation more than like making judgments on them or making points about them. So I'm currently about 100 pages into Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I've had on hold forever for the audiobook. The audiobook arrived and then I saw this at the library, so I snatched it, so now I have both. This is going really quick so far. I really like the humor in this, like the humor feels genuine and sometimes when I read romance novels I'm like, people don't talk like this, but in this one it does feel like realistic and that's making me like it a lot. I like Alex and Henry so far and we'll see where it goes from here. I also really like kind of the discussions of like the political elite and being like a first family and what that is like. So I'm liking it so far. I know that it's completely super hyped so we'll see what I think by the end of it. I also started Kiss Number 8. This is a black and white graphic novel. Both of these have LGBTQ aspects to them. Um, I think this one is a female female and this one's male male and I have literally that's why I'm guessing because I'm that far in like 15 pages in so far I'm not necessarily like in the story yet but I am kind of interested um, as to what's going on with the, these two friends who 
have had a kiss. I started today and I'm really excited about um, Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is a memoir by the young woman. Literally, she is my age, which is kind of bonkers, um, that was sexually assaulted in Stanford in like 2015 by the swimmer from Stanford. So far, it's written very beautifully. I read in the back that she has a degree in literature, so she writes very literary. And so far, it's very gripping, but also very sad. And at the point where I'm at right now, like she still has no idea what happened to her. I saw that it's also available on audiobook, but I don't want to wait nine weeks for the audiobook. So I need to read this quickly because I know that people are waiting for it. Let's run through the other things that I have checked out that I haven't started at all and I'm gonna organize them by kind of like what they are I think you can you have a running theme here of like the things that I like to learn about when it comes to nonfiction. I also have Nobody's Victim, a Fighting Psycho, Stalk Stalkers and Pervs and Trolls by Carrie Goldberg. This follows a lawyer who is fighting um, lots of different cases where people are um, put into situations that are not great. The fact that it's from the perspective of a lawyer sounds kind of interesting. She shares the diabolical ways her clients are attacked and how she, through her unique combination of relentless advocacy, badass risk-taking, and unique client empowerment, pursues justice for them all. That's probably more <laughs> the way I should describe what I like to learn about. I don't like to learn about sexual violence, but I like to learn about justice for people who have been victimized by sexual violence so that's a better way to describe it i also have on the same lines um, consent a memoir of unwanted attention by donna freitas this follows a student as a doctoral candidate she was stalked by her professor for two years she says that nothing was necessarily sexual but it still was inappropriate. She uses her nightmares experience to examine the ways in which we stigmatize debate and attempt to understand consent today. So stalking, these two have that in common. We have the education of Brett Kavanaugh, and this is supposed to look at some new um, revelations in the Brett Kavanaugh stuff. I believe it's by people that work for the New York Times as reporters and investigators. I feel like it's like all too little too late anyway, but it will probably be interesting to me to learn more about kind of this world that a lot of the political world come from. Um, so yeah, that's another option for me and this one's due soon. So I might return this one and then check it back at another time too. I also got a few nonfiction audiobooks that have come in recently so we'll see when I get to those but I'm excited for them. I finally got Audience of One which I've been waiting for for a while and then I also have that truffle book. What is it called? The Truffle Underground. That's supposed to be a true crime book about truffles. So those are the two other things other than Red White and Royal Blue that I will listen to really soon. Let's talk about two more graphic novels that I have checked out. Three more! I forgot this one. All right, so I have White Bird by RJ Palacio, the author of Wonder. This is a graphic novel that's also supposed to be heartwarming and tender like Wonder is. I've never read Wonder, but I thought this would be something good for me to read to then recommend to kids. It talks about the grandmother of the person in Wonder who was hidden from the Nazis as a young Jewish girl in occupied France during World War II. I also have the crossover which is by Kwame Alexander. It's illustrated by Dawood Anya Wille. I've never read the original The Crossover and I want to read this as a possibility for my graphic novel book club that I'm starting next year, but I do also want to read the original at some point. I also really enjoy the art in it. It's all like black and orange and white. So I'm excited for this one as well. I hope it's really good. And then the last um, graphic novel that I have checked out is Stargazing by Jen Wang. I'm so freaking excited for this. Jen Wang wrote and illustrated The Prince and the Dressmaker, which I really enjoyed. I feel like I read that this year, not last year, right? I feel like I read it recently-ish. Um, this is her new one. It's a middle grade this time, not a young adult. And it follows our two main characters who live in a Chinese American community and it's about them being best friends. Jen Wang draws on her childhood to paint a deeply personal yet wholly relatable friendship story. I'm all about that. Um, and the art inside 
is very Jen Wang. Look at those rosy cheeks. That is literally, that's her signature. Other fiction books that I have checked out um, that I don't know if they're, I'm going to get to them soon but they're things that i would like to read at some point uh, i have strange birds which is the new release by celia C. perez the first rule of punk was her first book and i really like that book and this one follows four friends and four girlfriends and it's also in florida set in florida which is one thing i really enjoy about her books um, because they really remind me of my childhood so another middle grade book that i'm really excited about is renee watson's new book some places more than others this focuses on a girl growing up in harlem i believe she actually goes to visit harlem and meets all of her dad's side of the family. I feel like this is kind of gonna remind me of Jacqueline Woodson's short book like this, uh, Another Brooklyn in a way, um, but focusing on Harlem. I feel like that's the vibe I'm getting off of this. I keep hearing lots of good things about Laura Ruby and she has a new book coming out. So I checked out her old book, Bone Gap, um, which she's very much well known for. And this is supposed to be kind of a more tender, heartbreaking, sad sort of story which I've been sort of in the mood for lately. And it's supposed to have a little bit of magical realism as well. And then last but not least, a book that I don't know if I'm going to get to before I have to return it because lots of people are on hold for it. And that is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tak. Takerzuk. This book is supposed to be more psychological. It's actually translated from Polish and it's an investigation of the main character trying to figure out what happened to her neighbor. Um, I first heard about this from Rincy at Rincy Reads and she liked it so I put it on hold. It finally arrived. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it in time but it's here for now. Those are all the books that I'm currently excited about that I have checked out from the library or have just recently finished and returning. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of these let me know in the comments. I'd love to chat and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.